So I got a video from Anthony Bodanza, oh. a YouTuber so motivated that he asked me to make a form check for him. Okay. And I did. And I found a timing problem. What? Welcome back to Bonanza Disc Golf, and that, if you've never seen his channel before, was Yanni over at DG Spin Doctor. Now, the way that he's approaching disc golf coaching is just so no-nonsense, and it just makes a lot of sense with what you look at every single pro's form. I like it because he doesn't like single out, hey, these, these are the two or three main pros that I look at, um, but the things that he say are just like, do this one thing, and it just makes most sense, which is mostly timing. It all matters that last split second when you plant into your heel, and then you start your pull through after, which isn't even really a pull through because it actually gets started by you planting into your heel. But he explains that in that video, which you should definitely go check out. We've actually conversed a little bit because I sent him some form videos, and we talked a little bit about doing standstills, which I want to look at real quick, comparing myself to Will Schustrick, who also is doing some standstills, and showing where I was starting to get it right, but still potentially getting it wrong. However, that's not going to be the whole video because I want to take you guys to a fieldwork session because first off, I just need to do a fieldwork session based off of what Yanni was telling me to do here. Second off, doing just the standstills, which I think are really good here, and I want to practice just to have really good standstills or just like one steps, uh, is a different, it's a different feel than having a run-up. And I went back to having a run-up, which I'll show you as well, and it just did not feel as good as my standstills. Let's take a quick look here. All right, so this is just a repeat of Will Schuster's form over and over and over again. One thing that you might not know that you're able to do actually on YouTube is press the period button as well as the comma button to go forward and backwards by one frame instead of by just starting and stopping because then you miss frames because the disc golf move is so quick. Also, this is a part of Project 100, my uh, series trying to add 100 feet of distance this off season to go from around 400 average to around 500 average. I don't think, you know, I don't know. I, I have a renewed confidence that I can be able to grow that. Uh, I just have not been putting in the time that I need to and with moving obviously I'm getting a lot more time now because I'm about to move and thinking through all of that so <laughs> you get a lot more time when you move and change your life but after the move in about three weeks I should be able to have a lot of time spent on disc golf. So I took this form actually after the last video where I had actually said in that video that since we were focusing on neutralizing the head, which is an important part of the movement, I think, it, mostly not just neutralizing the head, not focusing on shooting down the off arm in any crazy way, not really focusing on that to drive rotation, but also focusing on just having everything stay calm. I mentioned in that video that my timing looked like trash and I sent him a video right after I had filmed that of what my timing looks like. So here's the video that I sent to him initially, and this is the one that he responds to. And you can see, this is the fairway driver. I'm just gonna skip a little forward. Right here, I'm fully extended pretty much. I'm a little low in my extension, and my head is still actually a little more forward. I'm still not even planted, and I'm so fully extended, it's not even funny. And I actually start to pull through before my heel even hits the ground. Heel is hitting the ground, and I'm starting to pull through already. Right here, I'm already almost completely thrown, and I like haven't even really braced yet at all. And so the disc is out, and I'm losing so much power by not doing that. My brace is all right, could definitely get a little bit better. And I think a lot of this, I actually talked to Tyler Teed, who you should definitely check out his channel as well. We're gonna be collabing soon. He's not a big guy, but he throws pretty far as well. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel I think he started relatively recently, but um, or at least I came to know of it relatively recently. He actually talks about shortening that front step as a smaller person. And so that's something that I think I'll focus on because it looks like, uh, I'll show you in a second. But this is what that form looked like. And in talking to him, he was explaining, um, very Oakley form, which maybe not be bad, but he wouldn't teach it because I'm already loaded right here at this position. And then he says that this is backpedaling, which makes sense because I was completely coiled and then I had to wait for myself to hit the ground and then try to start to throw. And I think that shortening that step up will actually help with that. But the weight shift becomes very slow because of that. And one thing that you'll notice, we'll see comparing my form to Schustrick, whereas here, he's starting to get completely coiled and his foot is all the way out of the ground, Simon Lazat. Same with Eagle, same with Drew. And right here, fully extended, the weight is off the back foot. Whereas my weight finally gets off that back foot when I'm already almost, I literally just have to go like this and the disc is gone. So that is not ideal. We already actually talked about one of his drills, which is the sweeper drill um, that he linked to, which I did think was good. And so I took a lot of what he was saying, which ended up being that sweeper drill where you want to plant your toe and then your heel and then see, and then finish your full extension as your heel plants and then basically sweep your leg forward, which is a movement of basically moving the pelvis towards the front of the tee pad laterally. And that weight shift from left to right as a right-handed backhand player is what moves that. So after this, I actually went out to the field and tried to do some standstills, as we'll see here. And it's starting to look a little better because you should. this is what it should look like. Your foot is extending while you're extending your arm. Still obviously not perfect. And this is where I think my form looks all right here, but ends up 
kind of rocking a little too forward, and I still am a little more forward than centered over my feet, and my hips are a little too open. My brace obviously looks a little bit better and stands still. I think I'm still throwing, like not crazy far, but I, was, I don't think I'm losing a lot of power at that compared to my other form, just because of how much better my timing is here. Obviously still not perfect. But let's go ahead and just compare this real fast to the Will Schuster form that I had already pulled up. And one thing that you can notice is his weight is kind of centered right here and a little bit more bend in the knee over that back foot. I tend to be leaning back a little bit more. As he starts to kind of harbor this leg out forward, he's starting the reach back, which I think we're pretty comparable at around here. I think I'm coiling a little bit more prematurely up in my upper body by twisting my hips a little bit more. We'll get to the plant real fast, which actually we'll get before the plant. This is the main thing that I think I need to, to look at. But right here, we can see that he's planting right here and his back right here just kind of gets straight. It's another thing that Yanni talks about, which is thinking about your shoulders as going into a wall, which is flat, and so they have to stay flat. Whereas if we watch me transition into there, right here, my toe is on the ground, and he's just gonna move basically like he was pushing against the wall flat if you watch his back, whereas I am going to do that for a little bit and then start to kind of come over the top with my arm instead of flat, bringing the front shoulder up and forward. And I think the other main thing that's very different between these two forms is if you watch his knees. I'm not actually driving my pelvis back as much as I should be or my hips back as much as I should be because if you watch his knee during this transition point right here, they're coming together pretty significantly and they stay pretty locked. So his hips stay in this little like basically upside down U shape Whereas look at how open my hips are. They're pretty locked in there. And I think this is because I'm stepping a little bit too far forward for what I can handle right now. And that means that I'm very open already. So I'm not getting a fast rotation, which is meaning that I'm slowing down that weight transfer. Whereas he has a very fast rotation, boom, boom. His knee is a little bit more down. Mine never really gets into that down position until like way at the end here. And I think that's because I'm not going down and back up. So a couple different things to work on and adding in a little bit of a throw. So let's go ahead and uh, get to the field. Actually, we're bringing him back. Take some graces. I've missed these guys. They're very comfortable in my hands. So we're gonna throw graces today and see if we kick the enigma out of the bag, at least for this preseason. But I probably have another distance driver that is going to be able to cover a lot more slots that is coming soon that I think I'm gonna like a lot. But let's get over to a field and try this stuff out because it is humbling. So I have to learn so much, but there is definitely a game plan to get there. I'm so pumped. Oh, I forgot my tripod, but I made it out to the course or to the field here. And I've actually warmed up and threw a couple shots and I made an interesting conclusion. Okay. I threw some envies and some graces and I practiced the standstill and then tried to think through my run up, which is I'm trying to keep it very clean, keep my coiling level instead of really down like I have been and keep the timing correct. But let me throw a couple shots standstill and a couple shots with the run up and show you what I found out. First off, I definitely missed graces. But second off, I'm really focusing on not throwing crazy hard. Like I'm not trying to overdo it at all. My elbow still has just like basically an overuse thing going on. So I'm wearing this, I have a video about it on my second channel. And I have all of like my tripods and stuff linked down in the description if you wanted to check that out for my phone. But we're gonna take some slow-mo of me throwing and obviously look at it, but I'm gonna throw two shots standstill. I'm just gonna throw one good standstill shot and one good shot with a slight run up. And I'm not trying to run up fast, not, not re even really a run up, more of a walk up. Cause I really wanna emulate Albert Tom, even though he's a lot bigger guy than me. He could throw 700 with his form, just throwing golf lines <laughs> potentially. So maybe I could be throwing five-ish, 200 feet less, I don't know. That's better. It's not great. Really gotta work on driving that heel in. Now I'm gonna do one with just the slightest of run-ups. Uh oh, sit down, sit down, hit the fence. Whew, that scared me a little bit. The thing is, I don't think the run-up one went farther. And I think that that's exemplified again when we throw the graces. Like, that's good. Like, maybe 350-ish into a slight headwind. Now I'm gonna try a little bit of a run up. Just a lot harder to get the timing all correct. 
my run-ups always seem to end up higher. Oh no, get down. Whew. Safe. That might actually be farther. That was a pretty decent shot. Similar distance to literally just a standstill, which is what is going crazy for me because my timing standstill is just so much better right now. It's still not even perfect. Like there's things I'm sure we're gonna look at and work through, but that one just skipped right past the one I just threw. Are you kidding me, dude? Just for fun, I wanna see what uh, like a full run up would look like and if I can actually get some distance. Really focus on this. That brace was actually not terrible, but it still landed the same as the standstill. Are you joking me? Oh my gosh. That, if that doesn't show you the importance of timing, dude, I don't know what does. And we're gonna take a look at all those slow-mo real fast. Holy crap, that's dumb. I thought there would at least be somewhat of a difference. I thought that me running up would do anything, and it will. My walk-up will do something. Just, if my timing is trash, go out to a field, try that. Try, like, really focusing on good timing standstill, because it's a lot easier to get down. It's a lot easier, it's a lot harder to transfer it into a walk-up or run-up, but I'm gonna show you these this, and my ones from a standstill are going to be as far Probably not as the farthest one that I threw, which was slightly from a run-up. Um, that was the one I didn't even get nose up. So I threw five graces, that's the farthest one, but it's not really that much farther than that one at all if you look at them in line. Maybe about 10 feet, 15 feet. And then these are the other ones that I threw. This one had my fast run-up, and I thought I got a decent shot with it. This one had my normal slow run-up. This one was standstill, and this one was standstill. What? And the standstill ones had a better nose angle too. So I think the key is going to be taking that standstill and incorporating it into that X step to take a little bit extra momentum. But even then, my standstill is not even perfect. So we're gonna do a very small fieldwork session here. That was a crazy thing to prove. I didn't even think it was true to myself. But I'm probably just gonna be throwing standstills. For, not, not quite actually for a while, but at least working on them. Holy crap, that's craziness. All right, this wind is really wanting to come out. Let's just quickly take a look. So right here. Still got all my weight back there, and then I coil. I'm fully cold, actually, right as that hits. But the problem is, look, I don't have that U, like Schuster does. I think that if I release out there, that actually looks really good at my release, because of how far out my everything kind of stays in that pocket. I can probably get a little closer into my chest right here. Right here maybe a little more tip of the bottom edge of the disc. And I think that comes from this shoulder being a little bit higher because the hip is fired a little bit more. My hip still hasn't fired fully as I'm throwing the disc. There's still a little bit of weight on that back leg when I start to pull through. Weight is still on this back leg. Still, on, okay, now it starts to come off. So I'm still a little bit late. And even with that, that was the MB. We'll go to these graces because I think uh, it's a little bit better. I think bringing that up is wrong. I need to just be taking it out Kind of like that, that's better. The big thing is do I keep my hips in this locked position or do they open up? They stay more locked, but they still open a little bit too much. And this is a similar position that he doesn't like me in. I think I should still be fully extended around this position. But that one still went as far as all the other ones, so. And now the similar thing, so I take a way bigger step here and I think that's actually hindering a lot is taking a bigger step than I do from standstill, because standstill, I'm taking a step that I'm comfortable with. What is this? So I'm better at extending here, so that's a much better look of extension. I just don't think I'm actually able to fire my hips correctly because they're still a little too open. They need to be a little more closed. Better, not good. All right, let's work on it. Just slightly, I don't want to get a crazy amount of throws, and I'm gonna be working on this into a net. I just, the biggest things are getting that heel into the ground, and one of the, there's actually a comment on Yanni's video that he pinned that he really liked that had talked a little bit about the off leg, not twisting the off leg, but he talked about thinking about this leg coming in, because mine doesn't, mine doesn't come in, it just kind of stays open instead of coming in, and that would keep these hips locked. If it went like this, with my weight shift, bring it out, bring it out, push this hip back, and thinking about this knee guiding the hip back. Not pushing the knee in, but driving this heel in and having this knee guide that back. So that's what I'm gonna think about a little bit. Is there a beat inside of my sock? Whew, that doesn't feel good. Feels better. Just focus on driving that heel in. 
Oh, that felt a little more powerful. That feels like I waited for it to get off, and I think it's gonna fly way past my first MV by like 50 feet. Let's try that again. I like that a lot. I really focused on getting, instead of like coiling here and then going, that's a lot of weight on the back leg and it doesn't transfer fast. Instead, just Okay, that actually, that's good. I think that's one of the first times that I've actually felt what Yanni talks about when he says like, feel the lag. Feel the heel and toe get in there. That wasn't it, I didn't wait for it. I'm not waiting, I need to wait until I feel that to start to initiate the throw. I think that was pretty good. I don't think I can throw these graces because I think they'll go too far. I don't want this knee to come in prematurely. I want it to stay here because that's what everyone else would look like. Stay here, drag the toe, push that in. Okay, okay, we're getting somewhere. Nope, I did it again. Oh, bye bye glitch. It was great knowing you. That is not as stable as those envies. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna turn off the camera a little bit and do a little bit of just straight up field work with my phone because this is a little distracting trying to think through all this. Um, and that way I can like come back to you and we can look at the things that I've looked at, learned, and taken away because I had a couple throws there that I feel like were really good. Let's look at those first and then I'll go finish that field work session and then a lot of my content for the next couple weeks or next couple months is gonna be surrounding this. Cause I think I can get to 450 or 500 by the start of the season if I just like really just dig in, do a little bit less review content, a little bit less fun content. Still some of that for sure. Definitely a couple every week. Um, which is crazy to think that that's not the majority of my content. But a couple every week of those style things, but most of it is just drilling, 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 getting that feeling. Um, yeah, that was exciting. I really like how that felt. This is the first one. So I'm still leaning back a little bit more than I maybe could be. My toe hits though at a good position and now it's all about moving this back, just like Will Shoot Strike, against a wall. So straight back, not curving my shoulder down. Once that hits, drive the heel in and move back against the wall. That's better. Look at, wow, Anthony. I think, maybe I could still, I think I could still have a little more lag for sure, but it looks better. Okay, second one is bad, really bad. So I'm kind of bringing that other knee, okay, bring it across. Touch, fully extended. Drive the heel in. Keep the hips closed. They opened a little bit, but that was fine. It's not the end of the world. My pull through is looking pretty good, actually. Nose angle is staying all right. Okay, this next one I think was the one. And I talk about all this stuff that we were talking about, blah, 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 blah. Let's see what's good from this and then try to take it into the next session. Hope you guys can see this well. Okay, reaching out. Okay, I'm not even close to full extending when my knee touches. That's actually the best so far. Or when my, okay, and now, my head's not as neutral as it could be for sure. Okay, look at that heel is down and I'm now fully extended. And then, I start to drive afterwards. Okay, so that heel comes down before, or when I stay at full extension here. Boom, heel is down. And my hips are much more in that U position. Not quite fully there perfectly, but way better. And then, one more frame through. Pull through high. Okay, that one's actually good, all right. Oh, it really is just about patience and waiting. Not trying to get the throw over early. One of the things that Yanni was telling me is, if there's anything that you're forcing in the throw, or like you're thinking about it doing that your body would do naturally, it's gonna be early and your timing's gonna be bad. Let your body move just by focusing on your hips. Oh. I definitely feel my form deteriorating. Just getting tired and hungry. So I think I'm gonna only throw a couple more shots, but I put my bag back there to range some of the farther envies, see where the destroyer is, see where the farthest grace is. That was like on a good golf line. Except there's some pretty flippy ones that might be pretty far, but it's like literally a straight headwind, so. All right, this MV was the farthest, little pinky boy, 301. I got a pretty tight grouping with all my graces and the destroyer here. I don't think I'm like more than 380 that much. I mean, I'm throwing straight no headwind, so that's really not that bad, but. 370 on the money. All right, just got done with my field work session. And I don't know if there's anything like crazy notable to like go through form wise. Took a lot of videos of stuff. Um, I'll overlay some of the slow-mos. I did 
figure one big thing out, which is my cue to help me get into the brace. It's not perfect, but when I did it, I hit like six 390 foot shots into a wall in a row. A lot of them were off the bounce. One of them was off the fly that almost cleared the, the 390 foot fence. But I figured out big time what that was. And I think the biggest thing was focusing on shoving my pelvis into my hip into my front brace. Like really focusing on getting that forward because if you get that forward, it's necessarily gonna turn you. That's a lot of what Yanni talks about. And so that was a really big helpful thing to figure out. Um, brace still has per isn't perfect. There's still so much more to go. It's a lot to go with uh, the upper body as well. My arm, my pull through all, or like coil, whatever, all that kind of stuff. But I hit 400 a couple times today into a headwind. All right, there are a couple more. I think one might actually be 400. It's gonna be close though. This is not bode well for me. 408 into the headwind. Oh, slight headwind now. I'll take it, 408, let's go. Can more consistently around 370, 380. I hit 430 into a tailwind that hit the fence as well. So that could have gone further on some skips. Figuring things out for sure. Uh, it's a long process, a long road. I'm gonna bring you guys along the journey of it. Hopefully I'll be at 450 consistently, um, which definitely seems a little more doable since I'm feeling uh, I'm feeling better about this and hopefully I get to 450, hopefully I get to 500, but there's definitely a lot of little pieces that need to fall into place, but they're kind of getting there. And that was a big one today, giving that hip into pelvis. But then when you do that, you forget about, oh, I need to neutralize my head and focus on throwing out before my head follows through and not lead with my head. And then I also need to focus on getting my elbow up and getting my shoulders tilted and then untilted and all these different things have to happen and you can't focus on them all at once, but by consistently focusing on one of them and then another and then another, they're all gonna get better and better and better and hopefully within the next couple months, my form can be closer to perfect. Because ideally, I want to have form that people could emulate. I don't, I'm not, I'm 100% not there yet. So don't emulate your form after mine, emulate it after other people. But it was a good session. I'm very tired. I threw maybe a few more throws than I should have, but my elbow does not hurt at all. It feels like it's healing. I feel like I got another week or so. Um, just going to continue to baby it. Probably not going to play much tomorrow. Just one thing that I might play just a putter only round. But other than that, just going to continue resting and getting better. Thank you so much, Yanni, for the collaboration. Just appreciate him. Uh, go check out his channel. Go check out Tyler's channel. Uh, I'll leave a link to the video that he did of me right down here. That's it. Okay. I love you guys. Bye.